Hello and welcome to Willowbird Studio. Today I'm going to teach you how to do foolproof inkjet transfers to polymer clay. I did a previous tutorial on this same subject, and following those instructions, you would definitely get about an 80% success rate. Unfortunately, about 20% of the time you might get a transfer that turned out like this. Egad, this is obviously not what you want. So you can see poor kitty has lots of mist areas all over, and even the parts that are almost transferred just don't look quite right. There's here by the ear, there's sort of a bubbly look, almost like air is underneath the color. I don't know, it's just obviously not what you're looking for. So, and one in five not turning out is pretty frustrating. So this tutorial will teach you how to absolutely eliminate this problem. The first step when doing inkjet transfer is obviously to get an inkjet image. This is a drawing that I did of a red-winged blackbird. I have scanned it and then printed it onto matte photo paper. I'm using Canon matte photo paper. I'm sure other brands would work as well, but this is just what I've used so far. You cannot use ultra premium photo paper. This technique will absolutely not work with it. The ink will not transfer. I have heard that people have success with regular glossy paper, but when I tried it with Kodak glossy, it didn't work very well. So I don't know, you can experiment with that, but this matte photo paper definitely does work. I just want to mention at the beginning here that this technique will give you a reverse image. Um, so if you have an image that has letters in it, you will need to reverse that image before you print it. Otherwise, you'll have backwards words on your finished product. Notice that I have uh, extra white paper around the image. You need to leave about a quarter inch around your image. This just makes it so that if any peeling up occurs at the edge, you don't actually lose part of your image. Now this is the step that makes your transfer foolproof, so do not skip it, whatever you do. You are going to paint a thin layer of liquid polymer clay all over your image. Just make sure the whole thing is covered, it doesn't have to be super thick. Some of it may even sort of sink into the paper, that's okay as long as you've covered up the whole thing. Now you're going to bake this, and how long you bake it for will probably vary depending on which brand of liquid clay you're using. I'm using Kato liquid polymer clay. It takes about five minutes to bake till it's clear. So here's the image out of the oven. You can see it's a little bit duller now because it's got a thin layer of baked liquid clay all over it. Now you're going to roll out a layer of white polymer clay. How thick this needs to be depends on what you're going to use your transfer for. I use a medium thick setting on my pasta maker. Now you're going to paint another thin layer of the liquid clay over the image. It doesn't have to be super thick, but you don't want to have mist areas, so it's better to air slightly on the side of too thick. If, it's a, if there's a bit too much, you'll just get a little bit of gushing out the edges, but it won't really wreck anything. Now you're going to put your image face down on the white clay. Now note this is not baked at this point. This is a new layer of liquid clay that is unbaked. So you've got your image face down with the liquid clay on it on top of the white clay. Now you can roughly trim the white clay. It doesn't matter what this looks like at this point. It's just so you don't have a whole bunch of extra clay to run through the past maker. Now put your clay with the image on top of it between two pieces of parchment paper, deli paper. I'm using patty paper. Any kind of paper will really do. You just don't want it to be something that's going to stick to the clay like crazy. This just protects your pasta maker from getting liquid clay all over it. Now you're going to run this through the pasta machine on the same thickness that you used for your clay originally. So it will end up just a tiny bit thinner than it was because with the extra layers of paper that are going through that will mean that the clay gets a little bit thinner. Okay, now you can peel off the paper and trim the clay to the same size as the piece of paper that your transfer is on. Now use a bone folder or your fingers and just rub all over the back to make sure that there's no areas that peeled up when you were removing the deli paper. Now you need to bake your transfer. So you're going to follow the manufacturer's directions for baking the clay, except if you're using Kato clay like I am, you can't really follow the directions. They claim that you only need to bake for 10 minutes, but that's just simply not long enough. So you need to bake for at least 15 and even up to 20 minutes. If you're using Kato, other than that, you'll just have to experiment a little bit. Once your image comes out of the oven and has cooled down, you're going to use scissors to trim a small amount all around the edge of your piece. 
You're not going to trim off the full quarter inch that you left around the image initially. You're just going to trim a little bit off. This allows the water to get in at the edges, otherwise there might be a sort of a sealing effect that's happened from the liquid clay. Now you're going to soak this in water to get the paper to soften up. You only need to do this for five to ten minutes at this point. But if you do it longer, that's no problem at all. Now you're going to peel the paper off. Now you're not going to get all of the paper off at this point. You're just peeling off the main um, piece of paper so that the water can get to the smaller fibers underneath. So like I said, it's not all going to come off. It's just going to look something like this. Lots and lots of little fibers and bigger fibers all stuck on it still. That's fine. Don't panic. It's supposed to look like that at this point. Now throw it back in the water and you're going to soak it for around 20 minutes. Um, even if you leave it in overnight or something, it's fine. You can't hurt the polymer clay by having it in water. So however long you want to soak it, it's fine. But you'll probably need at least 20 minutes to really soft soften things up. Now you're going to use your fingers to rub off as much of that fiber as you can, but you won't get all of the little fibers doing that. You'll need to get a cloth and continue to rub at the image to get all those fibers off. You can see in the picture here that I've got a piece of quilting cotton. You want something lint-free like that. You don't want to use flannel or something that's going to get more lint or fiber all over your image. This process can take more time than you might think. You might even think that you're finished and then dry your image off and still see little fibers. Uh, you just have to keep doing it until they all come off. They will all eventually come off and you'll have a beautiful image. So this is the completed transfer. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it is a reverse of the original image. And there's no misses. The color's really good. It's ready to go. At this point, you can cut the excess white off around the edges. I did this quickly with scissors, so obviously it's not perfectly square. You can sand it to get it actually all nice and straight on the edges, but that is a foolproof inkjet transfer to polymer clay. Thank you for watching. You can visit www.willowbirdstudio.com for other tutorials, discussions, tips, tricks, techniques, etc. all about handmade stuff, or you can see the things that I have made with inkjet transfers at www.etsy.com shop slash willowbirdstudio. Thank you very much.